Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we have something very interesting. We have the function to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius. And then I show you how to actually create a scalar function, a function, and a store procedure to solve this problem. Stick around. In our first example, we're going to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. Notice the formula is Celsius times 1.8 plus 32. So 0 is 32 Fahrenheit. 10 is 50 Fahrenheit. Cool. And notice we declared this time as at a real. In this example, we're going to be using decimal 5.1 and we're going to compute Celsius now. Notice that we're saying Fahrenheit of 100 minus 32 uh, divided by 1.8. Let's calculate that. And notice 100 is 37. And if we say 32 Fahrenheit, 32 Fahrenheit is zero in Celsius. Let's create a scalar function that will solve this problem. Create function, function name. I begin all my scalar functions with SF, scalar function. And we have one input parameter, Celsius. It's of type real. And then we say returns with a S and its data type. And then as. Well, what I normally do after the as, before I do my begin, is I put a comment in there and I show people that want to learn how to use this method, how to use it. And sometimes I even put more descriptive information. And then here's our actual function. Notice we say return at Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit is defined as real and the return value is real. Let's execute this. It's been executed and then we can actually execute this code on lines 10 to 12. And notice the value is 59. Excellent. In this example, you can see that I'm creating a table value function, create function, function name. I have one input parameter at Celsius and it will return a table and its name is at table. This table is defined to have one column called Fahrenheit. So I come down to begin and I declare my variable and then I do the math. And then after it renders me the Fahrenheit, I insert that into this table. And then I return the table. Let's execute this function. And you can see that was successful. Here you can see I have some sample code on how to execute a table valued function. Declare a variable. I'm going to set 15 to be Celsius. And then I'm going to say select star from that uh, function. Let's highlight this and execute it. Execute. And notice my value is 59. And there you have it. In this last example, we're going to create a procedure, a procedure, procedure name. My input parameter is the Celsius, a subtype real. And notice that my second variable, Fahrenheit, is also real, but it's an output variable. Then I say as, begin, and then I test to make sure that my Celsius input is required. And if it is not, you know, if it's null, then I go to error return. And notice there I say set RV equals negative one. Notice that I initialized RV to be zero here, hoping that I will always have success. But as you can imagine, things happen. And then error message is sent with Celsius is a required field. It goes to error and then it falls through to this RV. Then if it's success, I just come down here. I do the math to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit and I keep falling through there and I just go to underscore return and I also return RV, which I initialized it to zero. Notice that set at RV is the name of my output variable in, through my uh, parameters. And let's go ahead and create this store procedure. And 
when we create it. Excellent, it's now created. And now we have a small test that uh, says execute proc convert Celsius to Fahrenheit and then my input parameter and I said 30 and then my output and notice I've declared that. Let's go ahead and execute this. Execute and let's take a look at the output that I just received and it is 86. And there you have it.